everyone, welcome to another short poetry study guide. Today we're talking about Nearing 40, first a quick author biography summary, and then the line by line analysis. Walcott was born in St. Lucia, a former British colony. He wrote in the literary movement of post-colonialism, a movement that addresses the process and the difficulties of decolonization, i.e. becoming an independent country after being a colony. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for a poetic oeuvre of great luminosity, sustained by a historical vision, the outcome of a multicultural commitment. Nearing 40 is a lyric addressed to John Figueroa Rora, a Jamaican poet, but it doesn't only focus on his life, instead it focuses on Nearing 40 and the midlife crisis. The speaker thinks back to his life before and what he thinks it will be like now. An age blurs his vision, it distorts it, he acquires a new poetic vision and a new poetic style. It changes how he sees the world, he believes he will no longer have that youth and that energy he had before, and the poem has a lot of vivid imagery and literary devices which we'll get to in a second with the line by line analysis. A quick bit on structure, feel free to run over the poem one more time. Nearing 40 is written in first person, but throughout there is a lot of second person, as the speaker seems to address not only himself, but recount what he has been told, and tell it to us, the reader, and to anyone approaching 40, the same thing. The poem is 33 lines, without any stanza divisions, and the one full stop is at the end. The poem is written in stream of consciousness, meaning it flows like thoughts, very organically and without interruption. The poem has iambic and trochaic meter, which adds to the rhythmic flow of the poem, so although on the surface it has no structure, it still has rhyme and meter, which is sometimes falling rhythm, making the poem not sound monotonous, but rather emotional and melodic. I will take it a couple lines at a time. Insomniac since four, hearing this narrow, rigidly metered, early rising rain, recounting, as its coolness numbs the marrow, that I am nearing forty, near the weak vision, thickening to a frosted pain. Notice how the first four lines are already full of poetic devices, from the enchantments and the commas accentuating the speaker's words to the metaphors. He compares the early rising rain to a rigidly metered song, and he personifies it as cooling the marrow, meaning it reaches deep into him, it chills him to his very bone. The poem begins with a strong auditory image, it jolts us awake, and insomniac since four is of course very ambiguous, as in it could be time and age, time as in, well, since four in the morning, he hasn't been sleeping, he has been watching this rain, his poetic inspiration, and insomniac since four could also be age, as in since four years old he could not be able to sleep normally. And this ambiguity of time shows that while well, rigid rain, the poetic inspiration, is the only thing that is steady. Time itself is constantly redefined, it's unclear exactly what time is. He is nearing 40 and the number scares him, he feels it changing his emotion. He feels his vision uh, going both old from old age and his vision hazening, as in becoming less clear, suddenly he can only focus on the frost the glass that's right next to him. Rain becomes the symbol of poetic inspiration. He sees it all around him, but at the same time, he sees it through the glass because he feels as if it's at a distance, as if it's becoming further away. And then as he looks at it, we get transported to his memories of before and what he thinks his life will be like as a poet when he reaches 40. Near the day when I may judge my work by the bleak modesty of middle age, as a false dawn, fireless and average, which would be just because your life bled for the household truth, the style past metaphor that finds its parallel, however wretched, in simple shining lines, in pages stretched, plain as a bleaching bedsheet under a guttering rain spout, glad for the sputter of occasional insight. When he reaches forty, he will judge his work differently, with a more bleak modesty as his cynicism grows. He will become disappointed and uncertain about his own talent, talent because he's reaching forty, and he doesn't want his youth to go to waste. He's having a crisis about his identity, about what to do with his life, and we see it in the image of firelessness. It feels cold. We feel his panic just as the rain pelts around him. And he thinks that his career will go like a false dawn, because instead of blazing out and having his career go down slowly like a setting sun and all its glory with the colors, it will be false. It doesn't have fire. It doesn't have color. It doesn't have the passion and the emotion that made him the poet he is today. He later says that cynicism is like a seed you plant, and so he's scared that at 40, he will realize that his work is bad because he can now distance himself from that fiery passion of youth and it's too late to produce anything new now. His career will just fade out instead of going out with a blaze. And before this, the addiction was fairly normal, but now we have bled, which cuts into us. It really sounds sharp compared to the previous bleak images of like firelessness and calm and addiction. Now it makes us bleed with its 
vivid truth because he says that it's just that you bleed out it's only fair that you bleed out and you give yourself to your household truth and the household truth implies that every household knows that at 40 this is it your life goes downhill from there and there will be no meteor there will just be a false dawn it's only fair that he gets to experience what his father and mother had to experience before him and before his lines were like simple and lucid and clear and now he has to drag out those simple shining lines and the soft asana this shows us how much of an effort it really is how softly he treats it because every page is like a bleached bedsheet it requires so much effort on his part he has to physically stretch himself stretch the pages until they seem to fade and the whole rainwater thing is like the inspiration is guttering he it's like a faulty shower there's only a few drips of water that produce such clear and lucid and powerful lines with him he has to put that effort into doing so however you could also interpret this as a false negativity because Figueroa wrote simply. So Wolcott could be saying here that essentially it's a good thing because you become committed to the household truth. Your poetry stops focusing on meteors and superficial stuff and focuses on the things that actually matter. And yes, it requires effort. And yes, the inspiration is not quite as hard hitting as during youth, but this poem is too important. You who foresaw ambition as a searing me meteor will fumble a damp match and smiling settle for the dry wheezing of a dented kettle. For vision narrower than a louvre's gap then watching your leaves thin recall how deep prodigious cynicism plants its seed gorges are seasons by this year's end rain which as greenhorns at school we'd call conventional for convectional now you who before had this vision of a searing metaphor a literal ball of flame you were ambitious you thought that you had your entire career planned out and that even at the end you would go out in a blaze now you're just this damp match and yes it's damp it has that rain it has that poetic inspiration within but this dampness this little small bit of poetic inspiration actually like ruins your purpose you can't even light you can't even boil water let alone be the searing meteor the kettle is wheezing sick it's taking its last breath it's dented yes it can boil water but only a little bit it's distorted it can't even fit its purpose your vision is narrower than a louver's gap a louver is a window covered in wood and it lets out only a little bit of light so what it's saying is you can't even let out let in light your vision is very narrow of course the louver is also the famous museum with some of the greatest art in the world so what he could be Thing here is that you're losing your poetic inspiration, your artistic vision, you're becoming passive, your leaves are thinning, reflecting that your time is over, and this green imagery, of course, showing that you're no longer young. Now, instead, you gauge, meaning you judge, again, from the lexical field of judgment and constantly being cynical, the prodigious seed has grown, finally, you constantly judge, and instead of looking at your career over your entire life, you only judge how successful you have been by what you produce in your final moments as a poet and so of course if you cannot produce as much as you produced when you were young you think you're a failure and you don't look back at the previous accomplishments that you have the greenhorns are young people green again an allusion to this youth to this plant to this nature vivid colors of energy for as a green person you used to confuse conventional and convectional and you used to call conventional rain conventional rain and it's almost ironic now that you call it conventionally and you yourself have become a conventional person, meaning you're ordinary, you're not some sort of special poet that you wanted to be. But going back to what I previously mentioned, this poem can be interpreted differently depending on how you see age. So this narrowing of vision can instead be used to show clarity, as in you narrow in, you focus on the things that actually matter. And this kettle, get kettle, and this kettle, although dented, it still works. It can still boil water. You're still good enough. Your life is not over simply because you have reached 40 and that's just such a powerful message to change your outlook on life to not be bleak about it and to think instead of what you will do when you're nearing 40 will you view it as a false dawn or will you actually take charge and continue with the simple lucidity of your poetry that has now greatly improved or you will rise and set your lines to work with sadder joy but steadier elation until the night when you can really sleep measuring how imagination ebbs conventional as any water clerk who weighs the force of lightly falling rain which as the new moon moves it does its work even when it seems to weep we have the volta the turn here or shows that this is not the only path there is alternative opportunities for you he uses oxymorons steadier elation sadder joy the age can steady your mind just like figure aurora you can find something new and we circle back to the image 
that we had at the beginning of the poem, the speaker just simply watching the rain, and instead of the poetic inspiration going by, you can just engage in it differently now. You can embrace age as Figueroa did and make something more powerful about it. You will rise, you will emerge from being 40, and you will make your lines work. And eventually you will finally defeat insomnia, you will be able to sleep. And insomnia here is almost like being not scared of turning 40, because this is it, you have reached 40 and your life continues, you realize that you can write better poetry still, you realize that your life is not over, that those 40 years have not just been wasted and you still have 40 years ahead of you. You can defeat that insomnia and finally rest and produce maybe even better work. Even as the new moon, symbolizing his new age, rises, the rain is still doing its job. Yes, the rain could be falling sadder because you think that your career is going downhill, or yes, it could be sputtering, maybe it's not this vivid downpour that kept him awake since four, but it's still there and it's still doing its job. The poetic inspiration is still present, even if it's under a new moon, even if it's under a new sky. So I hope this poem has inspired you with its happy tone, or even if you chose to take the bleak outlook and focus on the beautiful imagery that saddens us and the actual negation, I hope this video helped. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you can take something away both from the poem and from the video. Thank you so much for watching and see you later. Thank you.